Hi there folks, in today's demonstration it is all about comparing two lists in Power Automate the most efficient way possible. So if you've ever tried to compare two lists looking for those that either match or for those that are missing, you might have ended up in a really big mess with lots of apply to each actions and a very inefficient flow and potentially over time a flow that starts to fail. Well, today I'm going to show you how you compare two lists without an apply to each using a select and a filter array. So if that's something that interests you, please make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So I'm going to kick things off from my SharePoint site. I have two lists, the first of which is my master sales list, and I have transactions from one through to five. I then have a second list, which is my regional sales for the north, and I have transactions one, two, and six. And we can already see that uh, my master sales list is missing transaction six. So what I'd like to be able to do is compare the sales north against the master sales to see what transactions are missing and therefore create them in that master sales. But if I drag out the list so they're side by side and we think about the logic, what you would tend to do in Power Automate is via an apply to each, you get the items of both lists and then with our regional sales north for each of those items in an apply to each, we would check to see does transaction one exist in any of these items here. If it does, with a condition, then you would say do nothing. If it doesn't, then you create an item. And then we do the same with two. Does it exist? If it does, we obviously do nothing. If we don't, it's, we create it. And then we look at number six and we can see number six doesn't exist. So therefore we would create it. And this is actually a really inefficient way of comparing data in Power Automate. And what you'll find is as those lists grow, your flows will grind to a halt and potentially you'll hit API limits and your flow will start failing. So my particular solution, I'm not going to use an apply to each at all. And you'll see these techniques through a lot of my videos that I demonstrate on my channel. Jumping over onto Power Automate, you can see I have a very simple flow. I've got a manual trigger. You may well, well want to run this once a week. You might have a recurrent, so it does it once a day, once every hour. Um, but for this, I have the manual trigger. And then I have two get items. So get items from the master, which is from my SharePoint site, from the master sales list. And then I have the get items from the sales north. And again, with the sales north as the list name. The only other setting that I've changed here is you'll see I've got limit entries to folder. I've got a forward slash in there. And that is, uh, I want to say a little hack, but basically a little tip. If you want to suppress the warning error that you get to say that you may bring back more items than expected, but you're confident that you want to bring those back, you can put the forward slash. Um, of course, also, if you have lists that go beyond 5,000, you might want to come into the settings here and turn on pagination and bring across up to 100,000 items. But that aside, what we want to do now is we want to get all the primary IDs, which in this case is a transaction number, and I can do that using a select action. So the select action will allow us to take an array. In this case, we want to get all of the master sales IDs, so I can get the value, which is an array. And then I want to just purely return those IDs in an array. So we can turn on this text mode here, go into the, the dynamic values, and we can hunt down title in this case, because that is my uh, transaction number. But make sure you go to the right to get items. So I'm getting items from master. If I was to choose it from the wrong one, you would probably find yourself in an apply to each and need to delete that select and start again. So that will now give me an array of all of the transaction numbers. And the great thing about that now is we can start comparing the sales north array against this array of transaction numbers. Do they exist? And we can do that using a filter array action. So I think traditionally you do this when applied to each in a condition, and you're actually checking each one off individually against a large data set, whereas this filter array will allow us to take the uh, value array from our sales north. And with that, we have our filter query, which is just a condition. So we want to see if the output from our select, which is now our array of the transaction numbers from our master list, does not contain the title or transaction number in our sales north. So again, if I make sure I get the title from sales north, if this condition is true, it will return the item from the list. And of course, we have our new array from the select, which will contain all of our transaction numbers, one through to five. And then we're going to compare that to see, does it not contain the 
title, in this case a transaction number. So if I bring up that list on screen here, through each of these items it's going to check, does the array of transaction numbers 1 to 5, does it not contain 1? Well, it does, so that's not true. Does it not contain 2? It does, that's not true. Does it not contain 6? It doesn't, so that's true. Therefore, the filter array will only return transaction number 6 in that output from the filter. So let's give that a save and test. So with the flow complete, the two things I really want to highlight are first of all the select action. You can see we've taken the input from the master list, we've turned that into an array of just transaction numbers, the 1 through to 5. And then if I go into my filter array and we have a look at the input, we can see that the input was from our sales north, which includes our transactions 1 and then there'll be uh, number 2 and there'll hopefully also be number 6. So these are the inputs. If we look at the output, we can see that we just have transaction 6 because that's the only one that didn't meet that uh, condition or it's the one that did meet the condition of that. It, it, it returned true by saying that this select array did not contain the transaction number 6, which equals true. We therefore return in the filter array output just that one transaction number. So you can see if we had a significant number of items that we're doing this comparison on, we're using a single filter array in order to determine which of those items are missing. So back into edit, what we really want to do now is to create an item. And uh, as easy as that, we want to create item or transaction number six. If we choose create item, instinctively, I want to go and choose the site and the list for the master sales and then of course if I was to go and populate the title and the customer name etc I'm going to end up in an apply to each and that's actually not a bad thing because I'll show you in a minute we can update the source of the apply to each to be our filter array rather than the get items so if I go into dynamic content and I choose the title for our sales north you'll see we've ended up in a for each each loop and I'll go through and choose the dynamic values now just for the other items that I want to include so product name and salesperson name and also the date. Now, the important bit is the data source. So the data source is automatically assumed we want to use the get item sales north. But in fact, we have filtered using that filter array and we only want to create that one item. So we can remove that dynamic value that's been inserted for the for each, and then we can replace it with an output from the filter array. Um, and in this case, I see we have body list of items, which doesn't look familiar. And if I click on it and go into the code view and have a look at this particular expression we see here, I would say this is not correct. Um, and this is possibly a bug in the new designer. What I'd hope for is the body of the output filter. So I'm actually going to copy this and control C. I'll go into parameters. I'll scrap this expression, go into the expression builder and type in body. And that will get us the output or the body from the filter array, which will then allow us to loop through it and create all the items. We'll hit add there. So the thing to note, all these expressions that have been created, if we look at the code view here, are all based on the name of the for each loop, so the items of for each, and you can see it calling out these different field names, the title, the customer name, product sold. You can write these things manually, but because we've used this little trick with create item, we've dropped the dynamic content in, it's added in these expressions for us, and then all we need to do is update the data source, in this case, the body of the filter array. And so if I save and test that, what I expect now is for it rather than to create items from all the sales north, we'll filter that sales north based on that condition we created, and then it will only loop through the one transactions that have been created in the filter and create that single item. So with the flow complete, again, if we have a look at that filter array and look at the outputs, we know from before that we just had that one transaction number, transaction number six. And if I look at the for each loop, I can see it's only looped one, despite us initially setting it up to create items from the sales north. But because we've changed the data source to the filter array, it runs once, it creates that item for transaction six. And of course, if I jump over onto my list and do a wee refresh, you can see that that item has now been created. If I update my regional sales north to include a few more transactions, you can see I've got 99, 304, and 893. Jump back onto my flow. And if we test and run it, we can once more pop open that filter array. And if we look at the outputs, we can see that transaction number 99 has been 
returned, we have transaction 304, and we also hopefully have transaction 893, which therefore results in the apply to each running three times and creating an item for each of those based on that filter array data. So as you can see, an extremely efficient way to compare two lists to see what's in one but not in another. And as it happens, it's something I've blogged on in the past, about 18 months ago or so, showing you this method and also showing you some of the time saving. I can see here that at the very bottom, I ran through 100 records through this solution, took 40 seconds with an nested apply to each. But when using the filter array method and the select to repurpose that array, it's happening in a number of split seconds.